Now, across the causeway is Muhyiddin Yassin's first day as Malaysia's new Prime Minister after he was sworn in yesterday morning. The move by the king caught most by surprise, especially with Mr Yassin's former allies in the Pakatan Harapan coalition saying that he did not have the majority in parliament. Now, here's a recap of the surprise turn of events that led to the appointment of Malaysia's eighth Prime Minister. On the afternoon of February 29th, the King identified Muhyiddin Yassin as the next Prime Minister on the grounds that he possibly had the majority parliamentary support. After nightfall, Anwar Ibrahim said that Pakatan Harapan had the majority in Parliament, with 114 lawmakers backing Mahathir Mohamad as their candidate. Dr Mahathir then said that he had planned to inform the King of the support he had garnered. However, in a twist of events yesterday, Dr Mahathir said that the King would no longer see him. He accused Mr Muhyiddin of plotting to take the premiership, going on to question if the government involving former ruling party UMNO will be ready to pursue pending cases against its politicians. Nonetheless, Mr Muhyiddin was sworn in as Malaysia's 8th Prime Minister at about 10.30am Sunday morning. Joining us now from Kuala Lumpur is Malaysia Bureau Chief Shannon Teo. Shannon, nice to speak with you again. Now, a lot has happened over the weekend. How has the public reacted to Mr Muhyiddin's appointment? Well, I think it depends on which side of the political divide you are standing on. Um, those who have been supportive of Pakatan Harapan obviously feel that they have been betrayed. Um, mm. Muhyiddin being one of the Pakatan Harapan leaders that was elected into government in 2018. Um, but if you are with uh, what was previously the opposition and people who are in government now, of course they are feeling that this is a great time to be alive. Mm -hmm. There's been a kind of a racial lens to it. Even if you are not an UMNO supporter or past supporter, the Malay parties that are now in government, um, there have been many people who have been questioning the kind of influence that uh, DAP has had in government. Uh, DAP is largely a Chinese party mm -hmm. and uh, their leader, Guan Ning, is finance minister. So they've been questioning appointments like that and uh, they believe that with Muhyiddin in power now, with his uh, coalition made up largely of uh, Malay leaders, that the situation will be rebalanced. Right. Well, Shannon, tell us more about the new Malaysian PM and his career highlights. Mr Muhyiddin was appointed by the King, but does he really have the support of Parliament? Mm. Uh, Muhyiddin, well, he rose through the ranks in the 70s and 80s, very quickly through Amno Johor, and became the Chief Minister in the state in 1986, all the way to 1995. And then he was promoted to becoming a Federal Minister. Um, and he was... Uh, rising through the ranks very quickly and he became uh, Deputy Prime Minister in 2009 to Najib Raza. Now we know that Najib Raza was um, and is embroiled in the 1MDB mm -hmm. scandal mm. Uh, and that led Muhyiddin and Mahathir to team up really to kind of uh, battle against Najib. Now they've not the first time that they've uh, teamed up. In 2009 when Muhyiddin became Deputy Prime Minister, it was also because Mahade and Muhyiddin were both criticising the then Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi. Right. Uh, this was one year after uh, Amno had lost his two-thirds majority in Parliament at the 2008 election. Mm. This is actually the first time that uh, Mahade and Muhyiddin has really split uh, and they've gone their separate ways and um, you know, um, we, we, we've yet to see how uh, Muhyiddin will fare as his own man, you know, he's his mm -hmm. own leader now, Prime Minister. Um, as for whether he really has a majority from the king, um, I think in Malaysia when the Agong says um, that he believes Mahade, uh, sorry, Muhyiddin has the majority, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, it's not something that you can really question. Mm -hmm. The only way to kind of test it, I think, is, well, to go to Parliament. Now, Shannon, I have to ask you, you know, what will be Mr. Uh, Muhyiddin's uh, next steps, you know, to come up with a new mandate or, you know, since Bersatu is no longer part of uh, Pakatan Harapan? Well, if to come up with a new mandate, I think there's still this burning question people have been asking. What was the necessity of this one-week crisis? There was a government in, in, in place. It had a, a quite a stable majority at about 130 MPs. Um, why do we need to realign the entire government. Now, he has to explain this to the nation. The narrative that you get from people who are supportive of him is that we needed to either get rid of DAP or DAP's influence in government, so we needed to bring in other parties to kind of dilute their influence. But how do we go from there uh, to wanting to give Mahade more support mm. to Muhyiddin becoming prime minister? Now, that's not been explained, so uh, he's supposed to address the nation tonight at 8 p.m., and we hope those questions are answered. And of course, um, affirming once and for all that he has the majority of parliament would be good. So we're looking forward to a parliamentary mm. sitting as well. 
Well, Shannon, what does all of this leave Dr Mahathir? He insisted yesterday that he still has the backing of the majority of lawmakers in Parliament. Can he challenge Mr Muhyiddin's appointment? Well, it is unprecedented, of course, to um, try to challenge a majority in any other way except in Parliament. There have been attempts um, to go to the courts and see whether this sort of appointment is legal, but everything that has happened uh, in, in Malaysian legal history is basically that the royal is ultimately the referee, right? And if the referee blows his whistle and say, well, it's full time and that team has won, uh, then you have to accept the decision. Of course, governments can collapse, right? Uh, the previous government just collapsed a week ago. Uh, mm -hmm. If Muhyiddin goes into parliament and he can't hold his majority, then he will be, be out of government as well. So the question is whether Mahade's side along with Pakatan Harapan, they claim they have up to 114 MPs. Mm. Can they hold on to this number when parliament reconvenes? Now, Shannon, you know, let's call up an uh, old picture of Mr. Muhyiddin, uh, Dr. Mahathir, uh, Mr. Anwar, as well as former Prime Minister Najib Razak. Now, uh, taken around 40 years ago, it illustrates the longevity of this generation of politicians. Now, should Malaysia look to a new generation of leaders? You know, are the people ready to move on from the old guard? There's this joke going around about that picture. The question being asked is who wants to be Prime Minister and everyone puts their hands up. <laughs> so, Three out of four of these guys have had their chance or are getting their chance right now. Right. Yep. Um, odd man out being Anwar. I mean, I can understand him not wanting to give up. But I think there is a sense now with both Mahdi and Anwar, they, their, their coalition has have been ousted. Um, there is a sense, I think growing sense, especially among younger Malaysians, that uh, we should move on. We should move to right. a new group of leaders, uh, charismatic younger leaders, uh, who maybe come with the same baggage as these older leaders. For every one of those people up in that picture, there's a reason not to support him. Anwar has his own uh, allegations of sexual misconduct. Mm -hmm. um, Ade, of course, was in power for 22 years. And many people who said that he um, broke down uh, independent institutions. Najib has his own 1MDB scandal, so on and so forth. Um, maybe people would rather back someone who doesn't have all this sort of uh, uh, hindrances right. and obstacles and that they can really bring the, the country together. Right now, Muhyiddin might be in power, but he is in power of a nation that's really divided. Well, thank you so much uh, for your insight as always, Shannon. Uh, always a pleasure. Now, of course, we've been speaking to Malaysia Bureau Chief Shannon Teo on the latest in Malaysia. Now, keep up to date with developments at straitstimes.com.